we are multidimensional avatars residing in no time and all time and so when we have our kundalini awakening we awaken to the fact that we are spiritual avatars and we are not governed by third dimensional time as we have been conditioned to be what is a twin flame we start having access to the to the sacred scriptures we start having access to the akashic records we become full-blown psychic Prior to the Kundalini awakening, we are locked into duality consciousness, separation consciousness, a forgetfulness about who we are as spiritual beings. But when we go on our spiritual path and we then experience the merge of our Kundalini energy at the base of the spine and the ascension of the Kundalini energy, we then realize I am one with all that is. There is no separation. Separation is a lie. Separation is a perception. The truth is divine union. Jen McCarty is a spiritual teacher and author of the book, Twin Flames and the Event. And I first came across Jen back in January, shortly after I had done my most recent ayahuasca. And the person that I was in a relationship with at the time was given a book, Twin Flames and the Event, for Christmas. And so much of what I experienced in my ayahuasca really aligned what was going on in this book. So I had to reach out. I've always been fascinated with the idea of twin flames. And I think a lot of people also are to try and give an explanation to some of these kind of deeper mystical types of connections we can experience when we meet a certain person. Now, I do feel like I need to say, I think there are some people that get into relationships where they do experience this depth of connection. However, I do think sometimes that can be confused with limerence. And I'm actually going to look to do a podcast specifically on that in the future. I think the explanation that Jane gives for Twin Flames is probably the most comprehensive and thought out that I've experienced. And I do believe that I experienced some type of mystical connection with the person that I was with that I'm talking about in this podcast. But I just want to point out that if you're watching this because you're in a relationship that's extremely turbulent and bringing up a lot of pain for you, sometimes we have to acknowledge that it may be a toxic relationship and not to try to tie a bow around it and think, ah, this is my twin flame and that's why I'm experiencing so much pain. And I feel like I have some level of responsibility to mention that because whilst you may have met your twin and that will initiate some of the deeper work because it highlights some of the wounds that we've not addressed in ourselves on the other side it may not be that and it might actually be a toxic relationship that you're in so i kind of feel like i need to preface this episode with that just in case some people are looking for some type of reason to stay in a relationship that actually isn't healthy so that's just coming from the heart coming from the right place and i hope that makes sense before we get started if you're watching on youtube please hit subscribe because it really helps the channel or if you're listening on an apple podcast or spotify please hit the five star review again it really helps out the channel moving forward so thank you so much for being here and i really hope you enjoyed this wonderful episode with jen who goes really deep into some incredible spiritual teachings as well as an amazing explanation of twin flames jen thank you so much for being here welcome um so just to give you some background on to why i reached out to you yeah um some some context so about two and a half years ago now it was november the 22nd 2020 oh yeah i experienced uh, an event where i experienced channeling for the first time oh yeah and I didn't know what channeling was before that and I ended up writing for two hours and a lot of it was actually biblical but pointing to the deeper meanings of um the things that kind of have been missed in the teachings of Yeshua and and there's actually passages from the bible and my mind was really blown after yeah. and it wasn't just an intellectual understanding it felt like it really shaped my worldview and yeah. understanding of what we are what we're a part of and, and what's going on yeah i then strayed away from the path where i um got busy with business and kind of felt like i, I, I left behind not left behind this awakening but almost kind of start to slip back away from it mm -hmm. until 
just nearly a year ago it was the 21st of may last year Mm -hmm. i met someone that i can only describe as my twin flame where it felt like there was this awakening again where we really awoke a a, a spiritual journey in each other Mm -hmm. she received a book for christmas which was twin flames and the events very good and on the 6th of january now plant medicines have been a part of my journey for about Mm -hmm. seven years first Mm -hmm. ayahuasca about seven years ago and the most recent one was january 6th we both took part it was her first time doing it and so much of what i experienced in this most recent journey i was relaying it after and she kept saying to me this is exactly what it says in the book like almost verbatim oh wow to, to the point where i text her some things and then she sent me a picture of the page she was reading and wow. it was almost word for word and i was like wow i need to reach out so wow. here we are oh wow gosh what what was the what, what was the page you know what? i'm not i'm not entirely sure what it was what, now what was the, what was it what was the, the message though cuz i remember from when so I'm trying to think now because it was back in January. But oh, I don't put you on the spot. It was it was really alluding to what we are, where we exist, what our reason is for entering oh, our, right. yeah. our bodies. Got it. I, I actually experienced in what I would call the spirit realm. Yeah. Like our our souls, her her soul and mine almost kind of connected and how it was explained, how it works, and how we come down here and and, and what the purposes and how we actually we forget we get into the physical body and the density of like the body allows us to feel some of the denser emotion and then we we forget we forget what we are we forget what we were before and we forget what we're going to be after when we're in this physical body and part of the journey of of this life is to actually remember to remember what we are and to awaken to that and and that was the essence of it. And I just, uh, yeah, so that, that's when I came across you and your book. And I just really wanted to have a conversation. So I guess the first question I would like to ask is, and you know, for the people listening, what is a twin flame? A twin flame is yourself. So the name of our creator is called God. You can, many names. I like to call it, call our creator God. So prior to us coming into these physical vessels, we exist as spirits in the higher dimensional realms and we reside in source energy and source energy um, fragments and separates from itself and individuates. And then that individual spark goes on a journey in order to return back to source energy and, and in order to gather information about duality and about individual experience to then feed back into the hard drive of source energy so that ultimately source energy can just keep on expanding so when in that moment of of fractalization and individualization source energy does not individually create a masculine one day and then a feminine another day it doesn't work like that a masculine and feminine essence is created as one it's one. It's like it's like two sides of the same coin. There are two sides, like a 50p piece. There's two sides. One side represents the masculine and one side represents the feminine. You don't just have one side of a coin, just like a soul is comprised of masculine and feminine energies. So on our on our journey of individuation, we will stay in our androgynous state for however, like billions of earthly years or trillions of earthly years, you could say. And then at some point it will be decided and decreed that in for the purpose of expansion, we we are going to split from our androgynous state into two polarized individual masculine and feminine essences. And so we then make that decision and then we, we, we look around the multiverse and we're like, oh yeah, we fancy, fancy going to the earth this time. Okay, so I'm going to be born here. You're going to be born there. And we're going to be coded to find each other through our subconscious mind and our heart consciousness. We are going to be coded to find each other. And so we split, we, we, we you know, we do all the, you know, preparations and stuff like that. We choose the highest timelines available to us and, and what have you. And then, and then we incarnate and, but 
but most people forget. 99% of people forget absolutely everything. But then there are certain people, and I would put myself in this category, that have made a sole contract to remember to remember what exists beyond the veil so that we can be guides and way showers to the rest of humanity to remind them of what they hold as the truth in their heart. So the reason why my book has been so well received is because I've done a lot of work with purifying my own egoic consciousness and returning back to the state of divine original innocence. And so from that place, there, there's there's no ego and, and, and it's the heart speaking. And so when people read the book, they're like, oh, that's my heart speaking because it's one heart there's one god and there's one heart and all all there is is love so we've all got to go on this journey of spiritual mastery to come home to to the heart consciousness and then we, we then we transmit from that place and then and then everyone will read it like oh my god that's my experience oh my god that's my experience that's my direct experience because it's the heart speaking it's one one heart and one god so and that's why my book is so well received because it's pure it's coming from the heart and there's no there's nothing distorted in the message there. It's very, very pure. And uh, it's very, very rare on this earth to experience such innocence and purity because most people that have a spiritual experience, it ends up, it ends up going into their ego and they think that they're special. They think that they're more superior to other people. They think they're more spiritually advanced. But that thought in itself keeps you out of your alignment with the truth of your spiritual nature. And then most people kind of like, you, you know, they, they use spirituality to decorate their ego, you see. Um, so it's very, very rare to find a very pure transmission. Um, and, and that is what the book is so I'm not surprised that you say that you had a direct experience I'm not surprised at all like that's I've, I've heard that many many times um so I hope that's explained what a twin flame is a twin flame is it's, it's essentially it's yourself you were created in the moment of creation um as a masculine and feminine so you can go into deeper I, can, I could go into a deeper explanation and take it back to monads which is a soul group each soul group is comprised of 144 souls 72 masculine and 72 feminine and the, the the feminine circle stands in the inner circle and the masculine stand in the outer circle and within the, those that the, in the circle you're standing opposite the feminine is standing opposite a masculine so and that is her that that is her tonal counterpart that is, that is her twin flame that is her vibrational match okay so the one in in your soul group in your monad we're all standing in two circles and opposite you is your vibrational counterpart and then there's a soul next to your vibrational counterpart that's called your near twin that's called your catalyst twin i speak a lot about catalyst twins in my book um, and then all the other people in the group are your soulmates. what's a catalyst twin your catalyst twin is the one that holds the closest vibration to your twin flame, but it's not your twin flame. So mm. because of the density of the earth, um, it's been quite rare for twins to come into harmonious union. And so many twins like in the last few thousand years, say, since Atlantis, it's been quite rare for true twins to come into physical union because of the patriarchy and the density of the earth plane. So many, many lifetimes we will be in relationships with our with our catalyst twin and that's why when you meet your catalyst twin they're very very similar to your twin they've because they are the closest vibrational match to your twin um there you have many 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 synchronicities you feel like your paths have been rewritten there are many 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 twin flame signs that you get with your catalyst twin that you get with your true twin but there's a big but and that is deep down in your core you know it will never resolve like this is not the lifetime for catalyst twins to be together mm. you know if you're on the twin flame path your catalyst twin gets sent to you to trigger you to support you to face your core wounding it's a bit like a gardener like we grow up in this third dimensional realm we forget about the fifth dimension we forget about god consciousness and then weeds start growing in our hearts and the and the weeds are uh, uh, weeds of fear weeds of doubt weeds of abandonment all, all these issues that we have and so the catalyst twin comes and they poke you at all your wounds and what they're doing is they're getting in there and they're helping you pull out those weeds so that the the bed 
the bed has been made mm. for this for the seed of the true twin to come and and grow and blossom and when we meet the true twin mm. will we still have triggering and yeah. these types of things going on but there'll be almost a different essence to the triggering yeah. that happens with the catalyst twin yes so it you know sometimes in catalyst twin connections there's it's like it's almost like an opponent sometimes you feel like you're on the opposite mm -hmm. side but with a true twin it's the complete opposite you will never ever want to cause suffering to your twin you will never ever want to be right you will never ever seek to have one-upmanship you will never want to ever say the words i told you so in in a sort of like you know kind of smart icy sort of like egotistical way because you 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 will work with them as a team to to resolve the issues you know yeah it makes sense and yeah, i mean how does someone know how does someone know when they've met their their twin you feel this great sense of trust you feel this great sense this, this a graciousness it's very 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 deeply gracious you feel very much like you want the best for them and you that's not that's not necessarily anything to do with you if you see them happy in a relationship you're happy with that you, you just want them to be happy it's it's like it's like 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 your child in a way you just want what's best for them um you're not invested in kind of like self-serving a self-serving agenda of wanting them to cut that doesn't mean that you don't have longing for them you do but there's this quality there's this spaciousness and trust and graciousness and um just deep 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 unconditional love like you just want them to be happy and if you see them happy without you that's good enough that's good enough for you but if you see them without you and they're not happy and you know that being with you is going to bring them happiness then of course you're going to want to be with them but if you see them happy then you know you, you, you're not attached there's no attachment you trust you, you, you trust god you trust the universe that in in divine timing it's going to happen whether it's in this lifetime whether it's in another lifetime you're just you're getting on with your mission you you know but things do change like as twins because when twins first incarnate into the third dimensional realm uh, and they wake up to the fact that they're a twin flame and they wake up to the fact that they have a soul contract specifically with that person it's a bit like they're both standing at the base of a pyramid and and then their journey is like that their journey is like that and they and, and they're getting closer and closer to that point of meeting and that point of singularity but things get really really intense as they get to that really really super close moment things get a lot more intense like it's much much more chilled and super super spacious and gracious when they're when they start out on their journey but as they come into physical union as that's getting closer that there, there is like an urgency and a restlessness um can can come in which you then have to really dig deep into your spiritual mastery to be able to navigate the intensity of the other twin waking up because very often what happens is the divine feminine twin wakes up the, the divine masculine is completely given up the memo and is in complete survival mode with a karmic that is completely traumatizing him on a spiritual level and he has completely absolutely forgot the memo that he's he's a divine counterpart and so as they go on this journey she knows she remembers she remembers she remembers he's completely asleep he's completely asleep but she's kind of like helping him wake up and then at one moment he'll wake up and he'll be like oh my god oh my god i'm a divine counterpart like this is my divine masculine but then at, at that moment he will it, very often he will experience a lot a lot of his core wounds because whenever he's in her presence she's like the golden sun and he thinks that he's got his shit together on like so many levels he's like mr sorted but then she comes in and she she is like shining a light on his shadow and then he realizes that he's a lot more effed up than what he believed he was um, prior to being in, in her vibrational presence. And so as they get closer and closer to union, she starts then really deeply connecting in with his, because um, then he starts feeling guilt. He starts feeling all manner of stuff because he's in this crappy karmic relationship that um because he's given up on the divine love memo and he's literally gone if she's got a pulse and she'll have me i'll, I'll stay with her do you know what i mean and so and then he really wakes up and he's like oh my god like i'm really embroiled in this unsatisfactory relationship um and he starts waking up to true love and then and then it gets quite intense on, on that part of the journey 
And how do people handle the intensity? Because from my experience, I mean, just to share a little bit, we actually, the, the, the moment we met, I felt like I'd known her a lifetime already. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it was, it, it was intense pretty quickly for both of us. For both of us, we both experienced the highlighting of the wounds. And yeah. although we were people already on a path, you know, doing the work, um, it highlighted it even more so. But it was all, it was always in like, a, it was, there was no malevolence there. There was no yeah. like kind of intentional things to each other to highlight the wounds. It was almost like there was a part of us that were exactly the same mm -hmm. and a part that were exact opposites. And it right. was some of the exact opposite parts, I would say maybe would le like lead to, for example, uh, like attachment style and certain reactions that was completely unintentional, that would almost be the opposite of the other person's where it would really highlight, oh shit, I've got some work to do here. And yeah, you know, intense, this really intense, like deep love, which was like, never experienced this before. And also, uh, uh, a fear that kind of went along with it almost immediately, like uh, like the nervous system was like, "What's going on? What is this?" Um, which you know, but because because there was no malevolence, it, it allowed us to take a look at what that thing was with with space and with mm. kind of uh, gentleness to uh, to see it. But I can imagine there's a lot of people that might meet that person where they shit themselves <laughs> and almost run away. Is, is that something you kind of encountered? Do you see that? Well, yeah. I mean, men have had a really, really hard time in this realm, like way, way harder than the feminine, you know? And so a lot of men have, it, it, it starts in early childhood when, boys are really really able to express their emotions but then at some point when they get to about six or seven they start getting that programming of like big boys don't cry and and that's huge like for a little boy to hear that from his dad or to hear that from a sort of like an authority figure has a huge impact on the male psyche and so they then start to repress their their natural sort of trauma release mechanism which is just to cry and to shake and to you know just to release it and then what happens is they start burying it down burying it down and then this this becomes addiction this becomes depression this becomes all manner of sort of um misalignment for the masculine and so that the masculine for a lot very very it's very very common for the masculine to slip into survival mode not he's not in thriving he's not thriving in the third dimension he is literally surviving he's going to the pub he's drinking he's got you know getting into football all those kind of like escapism sort of things anything to avoid um, finding some sort of eloquence around dealing with his trauma. So, so yeah, the masculine does, can run from the feminine, whereas the feminine, for the most part, she hasn't received that programming, none of it. It's like, you can cry, cry, have a tantrum, do whatever you need to do. There, there, there's nothing. And so the feminine doesn't have the same level of suppression on an emotional level. So she's much more adept in the... in speaking generally, of course, but she's much more adept in the realms of emotional fluency and emotional maturity. Whereas the divine masculine has, his, his growth and development has been, um, has been held back, you know, has been, has been blocked in a way. So when the divine masculine meets the feminine, um, mostly he, he can't even believe that it's real. He thinks he's just in a fantasy. He thinks he's like living in a fantasy world, and and true love doesn't exist. This this realm doesn't can't can't possibly hold true love. I'm I'm in a fantasy. I, oh, look, I'm doing that thing again where I'm putting this woman on a pedestal and blah blah blah. And then and he doesn't really, you know, for the most part, he doesn't take it seriously. You know, he he thinks that he's making it up. He thinks he's in a in an illusion. And then and so God's like, oh my God, I got to roll my sleeves up here, right? We've got a really really try to help this divine masculine and so that will be the that will be through synchronicities that will be through dreams that will be through messages from other people from pertinent songs song lyrics and stuff like that that 
he starts getting validated on the heart consciousness. His heart consciousness starts to become validated by the external realm. And, and ultimately, you know, it, 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 that's his journey, you know, is to come to awakening. But yeah, a lot, a lot of divine masculines, not all, not all, but particularly on, on this high level twin flame path, it doesn't really count if you're, if you're not really signed up for this, if you're just like going to be a soulmate, you're not going to do the deep work in this lifetime. There isn't so many of these issues. It's like, but when you really, really have, have signed that memo that you're going to, you're going to ascend and you're going to experience a twin flame relationship, it, it is an extraordinary mountain to climb. It is an extraordinarily arduous mountain to climb, but it has the best views, the most spectacular vistas, the most rewards on a spiritual level. Whereas a lot of people, they think I can't, can't be asked. I'll just, I'll just get my material benefit and I'll just live in a nice house, have a decent income, go to the pub, you know, have a few mates and then get old and then and then die do you know what I mean and then and they'll die and they'll be like oh didn't quite do very well on the old ascension path in that lifetime I'll have to go straight back back into the wheel of karma and um hopefully this time we're going to wake up <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah yeah and you know, what can people do when they're when they are climbing that arduous mountain you know at the point where it does feel difficult do you think there's anything that people can do in particular because I've I've spoke to a lot of people where especially I would say men mm. that actually are on a spiritual path where they are doing the work they are actually very connected to their emotion they've actually integrated the feminine within mm. and 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 women that i've spoken to that where where people have seemed to have met that twin flame where it's almost seemed insurmountable where the the spectrum of the pleasure and the pain and trying to kind of balance that dynamic because it's almost like all the things we understand about relationship go out the window and we need like a new model under that kind of as the foundation for the twin flame relationship mm. well that it's all in my book I, I highly re it's like it's going to be like the bible for twin flames like it's literally like not no stone is left unturned i devote a whole chapter to speaking about this but some of the tools that you can use are flower essences flower essences are very 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 powerful because we all are vibrational beings and so for me because this is a very very intense journey i've danced with despair quite a lot you know and so then i'll, I'll reach for the essence that helps you to neutralize despair within your auric field and that would be sweet chestnut so when i get a little little glimmer that that despair energy is coming in i go straight for the sweet chestnut i've also had a lot of grief to deal with in my life loads and loads of grief and so what is the grief remedy star of bethlehem so when i get that old you know those visitors those grief visitors coming into my psychic field i go straight for the star of bethlehem this is this is like this is amazing like super super amazing flower essences you you've also um you've got to have a spiritual practice like you, you can't believe your monkey mind like there's no person has ever become enlightened by believing their monkey mind like none that is not the way to enlightenment the way to enlightenment is to become the observer of your monkey mind your yeah your mind doesn't know it's ass from its elbow and everyone needs to deeply realize that that it's it's not your way home the way home is to is to be in observer mode so you need to find a spiritual practice it's absolutely fundamental otherwise you you will get completely drowned on this path one of the things that I super advocate in my teachings are becoming addicted to gratitude because every time you go on a rampage of gratitude, you are effectively like, we're all like transmitters. We're all like radio transmitters. And the, the, the third dimensional realm is trying to keep us in, in the 3d all the time, but we have the ability to turn up the, 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 you know, the knob on our transmitter and we can attune ourselves to the higher dimensional realm of consciousness and we do that through going on rampages of gratitude talk about this in my book as well so all of creation like there is an energetic force that keeps the birds flying that, that turns a seed into a flower um there is this amazing there is this benevolent force that is that is turning a seed into a flower a sperm and an egg there is this force of creation and we must as transmitters attune to that force and how we do that is through gratitude 
Gratitude changes us our vibration and it aligns us with the benevolent force of creation. And then when we are aligned with that, then good things happen to us, doors open for us, fortuitous meetings happen, synchronicities happen, meetings of destiny happen, opportunities happen. But we have to become guardian of our spiritual vibration and not let the matrix control our vibration, which is the 100% agenda of the matrix. They don't want people knowing about the truth of who they really, really are, that we're all creators and that we have come, you know, we've come here to, to live in paradise, quite frankly, they, that I don't know why I don't, I'm not in their minds. I don't know why they want to do this, but this has been the agenda. Maybe this is just that this is just the playground that God has created for us to wake up. You know, it's like there, there is a battle. There's a battle for our consciousness and we're get, getting pulled one way. So we have to put our hands on the steering wheel and we have to steer ourselves towards the higher dimensional realms. But if you need to cry, cry. If you need to shake, shake. If you need to speak to someone, speak to someone. You have to be able to manage and navigate your own intense path like you're not going to get away from it like this is this is a path of authenticity there's no bypassing on on this path that i'm speaking about mm. have you seen the most recent matrix no i haven't i really want to see it actually but i've heard it's a lot of violence i don't like violence it's actually a twin flame story yes i've heard that i might watch it tonight actually yeah yeah i, I watched it again at the weekend is it good it, it is i think if you're looking at it from this lens if you actually look at it from this lens you see that um neo and trinity are most powerful when they're together yeah and it's like it's like they have to remember each other and right. they have to find each other because they're yes. forgotten and yeah. it's actually it's actually a twin flame story and the ascension yeah. that happens throughout it. So. It's, every, it's in everything. Twin flames is in everything. Like Adam and Eve are twin flames. The opening bit of the Bible is like they, they're telling us. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. I think uh, I think you'll like it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll watch it definitely. Do you think that um, meeting your twin flame can awaken not just um, a spiritual journey, but do you think it, it can awaken you to in fact, for people that aren't aware of like the idea of like 3D and 5D in these different dimensions, could you kind of give a little overview of that? Our soul resides in multidimensional multidimensionality. As a source being, we are at one with all that is. We then decide that we want to we either volunteer to come back to earth or we are we, we must come back to earth to serve our evolution. So we look around, we go, oh, that, I'll have that parent and that parent and like, that, that's going to work for my soul and all the lessons I need to learn in this lifetime. The soul then enter, leaves source energy and enters into what we call duality. This is the realm of duality, up and down, masculine and feminine, dark and light, black and white. This is the realm of duality. So the soul enters into duality. It enters into a realm where, for the most part, everyone has forgot the truth about where we come from because we've had these, these religions which have distorted the truth, even though the truth is in the sacred scriptures, the way they've been interpreted and enforced upon humanity is, is not correct. So we incarnate into these lower dimensional realms and what defines us as being part of duality is our Kundalini energy. So when we incarnate, we all have sleeping serpents that reside at the base of our spine called the Ida and the Pingala, the magnetic and electric force of our, of our true nature. When they are, when we incarnate until we have a spiritual awakening, the Kundalini energy, the Kundalini and the Kundabuffa energy are asleep. They're dormant. They're, they're, they're comatosed. And this comatose state represents spiritual amnesia, represents spiritual forgetfulness. Mm. What 99% of people on this earth are in spiritual forgetfulness. So if you are interested in astrology, interested in the light, interested in angels, you're going to get on your spiritual path. It may be martial art, whatever it is, there's going to be something, great writers, whoever knows, but there's going to be something that pulls you onto your spiritual path. As you then embark on your spiritual path, eventually you will have an experience whereby your Kundalini energy um, gets triggered, gets pushed. 
to wake up. When that happens, for the most part, the divine feminine serpent at the base of the spine wakes up and the divine masculine is fast asleep. She's like, wake up, wake up. And she starts prodding him, wake up, wake up. And he's like, oh, oh my God, oh God. And then, and, then they're, and then they're both like that at the base of the spine and they're both awake. And this has been triggered by going on a spiritual journey. This activates and triggers the Kundalini energy to come out of its dormant state. In that moment when they're, they're, they're both erect at the base of the spine, they recognize each other and then they rush together in divine, holy, sacred union. This is the inner internal uh, inner alchemical marriage, which I, which is what I speak about in great, great depth in my book. As they merge at the base of the spy, they they come into sacred union. So when the when the serpents are asleep, this represents um, this represents separation, the, the 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 consciousness of separation. Whereas when they come into come into union, this is the consciousness of marriage, of divine sacred union. Now, when the serpents meet and merge at the base of the spine, they then begin to ascend up through the chakra system. And as they start, as the Kundalini and the Kundabuffa start moving up the, the chakra system, they, they start purging all of the memories and the trauma that is held in the chakra system. It is not for the faint hearted. And then eventually the Kundalini energy moves up to the heart center. Once the Kundalini energy sort of like reaches the heart center, it, it activates a, a, a very powerful gland in our body, which is the thymus gland. And this is the seat of unconditional love. So as the Kundalini energy meet, meets and merges in the heart center, we start activating our higher dimensional consciousness it starts really, really, really massively coming online. We start going into spiritual bliss and we start awakening to the fact that we are children of God. We are children of love. We, our soul essence was created in unfathomable love. And when our journey is complete, we will return home to that unfathomable love. And we awaken to divine love, unconditional love. As then the Kundalini energy moves up through the throat chakra, clearing, purging, it gets to the pineal gland. And this is where it gets very, very, very interesting because it then, it then connects with the pineal gland which is the third eye, and it connects with the pituitary gland, which is the electromagnetic organs in the brain. And once the kundalini energy starts interacting with the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, it, it starts sending pulses to them. And these pulses then orchestrate a release of a secretion, which they speak about in the Bible, which is called the milk and the honey. And so... So the Kundalini energy triggers the release of the milk and the honey. Um, I can't remember the technical words for them, but then they then merge within the claustrum. And then the, the claustrum is where we get the word classroom from, the claustrum. And then the claustrum then starts releasing what is called the Christ oil. And then, and this is what I've gone through and this is what I speak about in the book. And then one, once the Christ oil, you may have gone through it as well, like from what you said, but when the Christ oil starts getting released, we, we go into nirvanic consciousness. We go into nirvanic consciousness and we start having access to the, to the sacred scriptures. We start having access to the Akashic records. We become full-blown psychic. We become full-blown spiritual doctors, spiritual healers. We are able to read energy with our eyes closed, just like we, we become super psychic. Our third eye blasts open and we begin, we begin to understand the true nature of reality. So I've explained clearly that prior to the Kundalini awakening, we are locked into duality consciousness, separation consciousness, a forgetfulness about who we are as spiritual beings. But when we go on our spiritual path and we then experience the merge of our Kundalini energy at the base of the spine and the ascension of the Kundalini energy, we then realize I am one with all that is. There is no separation. Separation is a lie. Separation is a perception. The truth is the 
divine union. I am one with God. So it's like it's, you understand that life is a tapestry and every single thread is intricately connected. There's no separate part of the tapestry. You understand your place in the divine tapestry of existence. Mm. And so that is unity consciousness. That is Christ consciousness. That is fifth dimensional consciousness. That is higher dimensional consciousness. And it's called entering into the point, into the zero point field. The zero point field is the place within our consciousness where all dimensional realities and all timelines converge. In, so this is not a third dimensional linear planet. This is what the controllers have had everyone believe. We are multidimensional avatars residing in no time and all time. And so when we have our Kundalini awakening, we awaken to the fact that we are spiritual avatars and we are not governed by third dimensional time as we have been conditioned to be. And so therefore we then start healing our timelines, whether that's collective timelines or whether it's our own personal timelines, whereby we have experienced trauma. And then when you come into unity consciousness, then you realize mm, I've got a lot of timeline correction work to do because this went down, that went down, that went down, that went down. That was from a past life. That was from Atlantis. That, there, there's all this stuff that needs to be resolved. And only I am the, the true doctor of my own soul. There's no external force that can can like sort of like be the doctor to make you well it's our own avatar consciousness which has to reset and restore us back to our original divine setting and so that is it so the zero point field you've got third dimensional consciousness which is totally totally lost that you you, you believe you're separate and then you go on a little bit of a spiritual path you get into the fourth dimensional consciousness most people that speak about spirituality online are in fourth dimensional consciousness for the hallmarks of fourth dimensional consciousness are you're a little bit more advanced than 3d but there's a lot of ego. There's still a lot of duality in 4D. A lot of these people think that they are superior, but because oh, I'm, I'm way more superior than 3D people, that in itself is, is the absolute antithesis of enlightenment. There's a lot of these people think that they're spiritually superior. They believe that they're special. And this is the hallmarks of 4D consciousness. They're, they are 10 a penny online. 10 a penny because some people that have a little bit of a spiritual experience and it goes to their ego that's why they they're not able to be pure uh, transmitters so but it takes the this is why in the bible says you must have the consciousness of a child if you are to enter the kingdom of heaven you must have the consciousness of the child whereas most people are stuck in 4d they haven't come they haven't arrived at that place yet of childlike innocence it's very very rare I've never met anyone really, maybe one or two people in my life that have have got that purity and wisdom. Um, and so from fourth dimensional consciousness, then if you're lucky and you do the right work and you, you keep your ego in check, then you, you're going to come to the 5D. And then when you enter into 5D, that is the zero point field. That is where um, all polarity merges into oneness. And that is the, the base point of the higher dimensional consciousness. So from 5D, I talk a lot about 5D. 5D is Christ consciousness. And then you expand and go. But the thing is, when you're in 5D, you're actually multidimensional. So I can do work on the 33rd dimension. I will be called to do work on the 33rd dimension. I do a lot of ninth dimensional clearing. I do a lot of huge amount of work on the 12th dimension. Because the fifth dimension is the gateway to the full higher dimensional consciousness. Mm. Wow, that was a, an incredible explanation. Thank you. Um, so do you think that when we meet our twin flame, it mm -hmm. can awaken or trigger or activate that journey. It does. That's that's exactly what it does. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. my, my experience has been pretty much that actually. I, I, things that I would have considered mystical or maybe yeah. at one time woo-woo that I would have yeah. maybe poo-pooed and thought like, oh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. I haven't experienced it oh. where I will wake up feeling a pain in my body and it's almost not mine, it's hers. Or where we're, we're talking and I feel something in my chakras, but I'm yeah. aware it's going on for her. And I'll say, hey, just stand up a minute. And I'll kind of say, just like you would do this and just take a few deep breaths. And all of a sudden, 
tears start streaming for her, but I could feel the blockage in me. Wow. And then it's releasing for her. And it, it, even as far as um, the same type of thing, where I was like, okay, I just feel guided. Let's put some pillows under the back, open out the, the, there was like the chest and the throat, big emotional purge, and then light language just started pouring through. Wow, that's beautiful. And I was just feeling guided. And then it was like, now go to a fetal position, more purging. And wow, well done. Great work, brother. And it was just kind of wild because it's like I was just open and it was just this flow. And again, a, a year ago, a year ago, I would have gone nonsense. Wow. Gosh, but, it happened fast. Yeah. Yeah. And un- un- unbelievably so. Within, uh, it, you know, things like we have the same birthmark in the same place. Wow. And you know, like the, these these little things. And I remember the first time it happened, she'd said, my throat's hurting. And immediately I got a twinge here. And I said, oh, is it here? And she said, exactly there. <gasps> and over and over again, these things happened. And I would say for me, experiencing that with her, that really awoke it. these types of things now where I experience it with other people as well. Where mm. I'm talking to other people and I'll feel things in my kind of, in my energy, in my body, where I might feel tightness in my throat. And right. if someone else is kind of maybe, there's that resistance there, maybe I'll, I'll feel in the throat chakra and the sacral. And yeah. then I'll just ask like, hey, is there anything going on for you around like maybe identity and not, you know, not, not being able to express? And they'll say, yeah. And I'll say, do you have any tightness in your throat? Yeah. And, but that all started from meeting. Wow. Wonderful. That's gorgeous. Yeah, so it's, it's um, it's it's been pretty it's been pretty wild, and um, I think I think there's a lot of people that, like you say, you know, maybe at the base of the pyramid, and they meet and they start to go up, and it starts to get more intense, and the point where they turn and say, "I'm out because this is too much," but maybe not realizing if they keep going up, what starts to unlock, what starts to awake uh, awaken, and what we start to realize that we are, and it's like a thousand times beyond what we are. And to your point, it's not that I'm special. This is in everybody. It's everyone. The same thing, the the consciousness that flows through me, flows through you, flows through absolutely everybody. But there is this, but people have forgot. And and I know, I mean, I I did a podcast with Hamilton Souther, who's an ayahuascaro, and I was saying this to him, and I started crying when I was talking about people having forgot. Because it's like, I get emotional sometimes because it's like the, the the complexity and the depth and the the magnificence and the awe that flows through everybody. And so yeah. many people go through life never getting a glimpse of what they actually are mm-hmm. and being full to think that they're just this separate self having this individual experience and that there's nothing beyond the this kind of physical, tangible body. And it's um, it's almost sad in ways. It is sad. And I think the way I look at it is that like third dimensional consciousness is caterpillar consciousness. And it's like, we all have the potential to become a butterfly. And for someone like myself, I, I don't see myself as special because all I see around me is potential butterflies, like glorious, spectacular butterflies. But I, I know that I, I put my hands up and said, I'll do it first. I'll die in the chrysalis. I really am going to die in the chrysalis and go to goo and then take that leap. That was the only thing that happened. But there's, there's no specialness because you you see like we're all God's creation and, and God is like the most amazing creator and all God's children are so freaking exquisite and beautiful. Like that that's just the way it is. So how can you have the illusion of, of specialness? I, I just know that I'm a leader. I'm a spiritual leader. It doesn't make me special. It just means that I'm freaking brave, really. I love that you just gave that analogy. I literally did a post today, which was the kind of, the thing was um, people can only ever operate from the level of consciousness that they're currently at. And then in the little explanation, the thing I actually said is not all caterpillars become butterflies at the same time. 
at the same time exactly <laughs> your will might not even be in this lifetime but you know we, we all are we're all the same i was a caterpillar before i had my spiritual awakening i was a caterpillar i didn't i didn't know anything about god i didn't know anything about love i didn't know anything about anything i was i was completely invested in the fact that i was a separate egoic identity and i was really really trying to survive you know i know all about caterpillar consciousness you know but I don't know. It, it was just my spiritual destiny to, to be a way shower, you know. So I, I, I had I reached enlightenment at age twenty one, which was quite a long time ago. And in that journey, did you ever feel like you kind of like reached those like high levels? And then did you ever feel yourself almost like dip back below? And, and there was this kind of yo yoing, or was it once you were there? really dipping back? But what it's like, enlightenment is like turning on a a. a powerful light in a, in a school hall and in the school hall there's a lot of dust there's a lot of clutter there's a lot of stuff that doesn't belong in the school hall whereas prior to enlightenment you don't realize that you're just kind of like cracking on with it you know but enlightenment is like oh my god i've got to clear that oh my god i've got to clear that i've got to clear that because you can't bypass the body that was my journey like after my exalted sort of state of consciousness in india which i talk a lot about in my book um when i got back i then had to process it through my body and then the trauma had to move through my body so i had to do cathartic purging i had to do meditation and I and I had to face my limited thoughts even though I wasn't identified with them anymore because I knew about God I knew about the truth I still had to then meet them and that was not comfortable but I never ever um I wouldn't say it, that necessarily happens because that can happen that just didn't happen for me um I, I just I was able to hold that um but I, I I mean I was like properly properly plugged in to source energy like like next level kind of like most people will have an enlightenment experience which maybe lasts 10 minutes I had an enlightenment experience that lasted for six months and I, it didn't stop. Every single day I was waking up like with the angels singing to me about the nature of reality and experiencing Kundalini bliss rising up and down my chakras for six months solid. And it just didn't stop. So I firmly plugged in without any you can't come back from that. You can't become a caterpillar. You can't become a caterpillar again after that. But but you then have to then integrate. I then had to integrate my ancestral trauma because I had a huge amount of ancestral trauma that, that hadn't been cleared through my line, my lineage. And I had to go and I had to do that work. So I spent many, many years um, sort of like resetting the trauma and and healing the trauma with the gift of enlightenment somehow amazing jen mm. thank you so much i'm aware that we've both got uh, another meeting coming up shortly um for people that would like to find you your work your book where's the best place well, I, I, I re always recommend people come and follow me on Facebook because I'm super active on Facebook. So it's just Jen McCarty. I, I'm always the first Jen McCarty that comes up because I've got a lot of followers. And so I always just come up first. So if you just put in Jen McCarty, um, come and follow me on Facebook. You can even send me a friend request. You never know. You might, you might become friends. I, I'd love to become friends with you, though. You should join. Are you on Facebook? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, find me on Facebook. I mean, I am like an avid spiritual teacher. I am like serving humanity 24 seven and I'm putting out messages of great, great hope and, and wisdom. I'm also going to be running a beautiful global ceremony on the 5th of May for the Beltane. And we're going to be working with the dolphin energy to open up the higher dimensional portal so that the twin flame love can start pouring through because we are on the verge of many, 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 many twin flames coming into physical union. And we need to just... We need to harness these energies. So we work as the ground crew to harness the energy. So you would be welcome if you want to have like close proximity to me and work closely with me. Um, I'll send you the link for the five five transmission like in a few hours. But it'd be great for people from your community to come over and join the ceremonies. They are absolutely amazing. They're life changing ceremonies. Amazing. I'll make sure I put that link in the description so people can. You would love it, and your and your twin flame would love it as well. You would absolutely love the ceremonies. It's such a beautiful community. So we all meet on Zoom. It's really intimate. It's really beautiful. So yeah, I'd love you to come. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And it was a uh, it was incredible. So oh, good. I'm really glad. It's great. I, I, so if you send me this, I'll send. I'll put it on all my platforms as well with all your links. 
All right, it's lovely to meet you, brother. God yeah, bless you, you and thank you, your divine masculine sacred heart. I really, really honor you and and I'm so grateful that you're here. And um, yeah, you, you, you're doing so, so well. You're such a beautiful leader for the divine masculine consciousness. And I really see you and I really honor you. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. So much love. All right.